Hello BCNS class, my name is Blake Jackson and I did my project over the Land Warrior system being developed by the US Army. Uh, a little bit of background before I begin, Land Warrior was started in the early 90s as a way of bringing infantry combat to the 21st century and it mainly goes about this through using computer technology and just different technologies to increase communications on the battlefield. And it combines, uh, like I said, computers, GPS systems and radios. Radios don't really seem that interesting or don't seem like they'd be that big of a deal, but keep in mind that most soldiers currently deployed don't carry radios on them, and the radios that squads do have are notorious for being ineffective. So this kind of solves a lot of those problems. Um, I'll kind of go through the list that we were given for the main purpose behind the Land Warrior system is that it can allow a team to, or can allow an army to be more fluid. Uh, keep in mind that in Desert Storm in the early 90s, 24% of all American deaths were results of friendly fire incidences, which for those of you that don't know, a friendly fire accident is when an American unit would fire upon another American unit by mistake. What the main cause of it was was a helicopter and airplane pilots didn't recognize who the friendlies were and who weren't, so in their confusion they bombed the wrong target by mistake, and about roughly 40 Americans, I believe, died because of that, including a lot of other coalition forces. Um, right now, Land Warrior is still in testing. It was tested in 2007 after the program had temporarily been cancelled. The tests were successful enough to bring it out of its cancellation, so it's kind of an interesting scenario. Since then, Land Warrior's been kind of shaky, but I still think it's a pretty interesting project. Um, it's still being tested right now, just it hasn't actually seen, uh, from what I understand, combat since 2007. It's It was originally hoped to go full, uh, full on active in 2010 with spiling upgrades every two years. Since then, it's it's still kind of shaky right now, but uh, basically Land Warrior uses uh, a computer system embedded in the body armor that soldiers will actually wear. It has a computer that can uh, do a couple different neat little tricks. It's got a GPS locator that can identify exactly where a person is fairly accurately, so you can see the actual GPS coordinates of every single soldier on the battlefield. That's the idea once it actually gets up and running and deployed. Um, it's got a one kilometer range radio. Um, a couple of the other little neat tricks that are a little bit further away but that are envisioned for the project is it'll have uh, basic vital stats for every soldier. So if a soldier is hit, you'd be able to tell loosely what was going on with them, so if a medic wasn't actually close, they might still be able to treat the soldier uh, wherever he is. Also, it would be able to monitor stats like heart rate and things like that, so you'd be able to tell if one of your soldiers was, you know, about to lose it or it, how morale was. So you'd be able to tell how stressed a combat unit is. So that can all that information can be given to the commanders who are miles away and they'd be able to get much better situational awareness for what's actually going on at that specific moment in time. So it would be light years of what we currently use, which is basically radio systems. Additionally, Land Warrior would allow uh, GPS communicators in all planes, tanks, vehicles, every asset that we have and every individual soldier that we have. So the commander would be able to see exactly where everyone is. Additionally, going back to the friendly fire incidences in Desert Storm, we'd be able to stop the vast majority of those from happening because the pilots would be able to see, you know, where in the tree line the Americans were and where the enemies were. I'm going to start my iPad. Um, right now, it costs about, I've seen different estimates, anywhere from twelve to $30,000 to equip each soldier with Land Warrior. And if you consider, you know, how many millions of uh, servicemen we have against 
across all the different branches. It could be incredibly expensive to actually deploy Land Warrior. I'm now, I've now moved on to the pros and cons of this system. Um, basically, the biggest con right now is price. It's an incredibly expensive program. And also, Land Warrior is one of those programs that you can't really have a half measure, basically. Uh, to illustrate it, imagine having a cell phone, but one only one other person in the world has a cell phone. It doesn't really become a useful idea or useful tool until every single person that you know has one or, you know, until you start getting to that point. So for Land Warrior to be successful, you need every soldier to be able to use it. Um, when we deployed it in 2007 to the Middle East, the biggest problem with it was only select units had it. One unit, or one, I forget how many individual soldiers had it, but one battalion basically had it. So it doesn't really help if the only other people that are using this you know, new communication tool is the guy standing right next to you. You don't need a radio to talk to him. You need a radio to talk to the person, you know, a few kilometers away, or you need to know where they are. So our current testing system haven't haven't really been that effective for it. So you can't. It kind of presents uh, presents a little bit of a paradox. You can't tell how effective is it is until you use it all the way, and you don't want to use it all the way until you have found out how effective it is. So that's something that the army's having to work around right now. Um, the pros to it is uh, while other countries are developing similar systems, no one has something like this yet. So it would be a massive advantage to the US military over any other combat force that's mm -hmm. ever been ex in existence. So it would allow the US to be a significantly uh, smoother run entity uh basically think about it as process improvement that we've gone over just in a combat zone so a little bit of a different twist um, i'll kind of loosely talk about some of the little questions we had um as far as the inventor goes it's it's been under a few dozen different contractors or different contractors have done different parts also, this is a military program, so there's not one single person that's going to be remembered in history as creating this, especially because it's had a shaky history. No one really knows what's going on with it. Um, also, as far as a competition, it doesn't really actually have any competition. It's the U.S. Army developing it, while other countries are creating programs similar to this. No one's going to undercut the U.S. Army for what the U.S. Army wants to use, so there's no actual competition. They, you know, the Army has a monopoly on their own tech. Um, it will eventually become standardized, at least in theory. Most of what Land Warrior is, is theoretical right now. We have basic pro- we've got the basic core design now, but it's not actually being used, at least how it was envisioned. Um, there's a small exception to that, which I'll explain in a little bit. But uh, the idea is that it will become, you know, as common as a rifle. Um, actually, I guess I will talk about it now. Uh, we've used um, some of Land Warrior, at least Land Warrior style tools in our Striker infantry fighting vehicles that uh, use some of the GPS systems to keep track of their soldiers when they're being deployed. So it's like Land Warrior, but it's not on the scale of Land Warrior. Um, basically just the soldiers assigned to the infantry fighting vehicle, the striker, use the technology. So once again, it's useful for them, but not really useful as the program was designed to work in mass. Um, part of Land Warrior, it was combined with the Future Warrior program, which in 2005 and Future Warrior was a little bit more, I guess, science fiction-y, a little bit more futuristic. Um, these are some of the interesting components that they're talking about doing. Obviously, when I actually tell you what they are, you'll see that we are, you know, light years away from them. But they, the Army is talking about um, having... 
uh, kind of like exo exoskeleton suits that would basically um, increase the strength of the person that's wearing them by having mechanical joints mimic what the body's actually doing. So soldiers would be able to lift um, larger or lift heavier packs. They'd be able to run faster and run significantly farther on less energy because mechanics would basically be doing the actual running for the soldier. Um, they're talking about like basically robotic clothing that um, would be as flexible as a standard t-shirt but when it detected a fast-moving projectile it would become you know harder than steel and then instantly go back to being just a shirt so it would allow operatives to not be burdened by excess weight which is our current body armor is basically just metal and heavy fabric woven together so it'd be significantly lighter and in theory significantly more effective so that's kind of the future of future warrior which is now land warrior um i really doubt that we're going to be seeing anything like that soon but it is at least what they're talking about so right now your tax dollars are going to that so uh this was my presentation over land warrior thank you very much if any actual person watched this entire thing bye-bye just kidding